Apparently there's a, an archaeological site. Let's have a look. Let's have a snoopy snoop. when there's a railing. That is big. That is big. Ah, yeah. That's uh, oh, it. Is open. Preserve the archaeological site and make the most of it. Do not touch. Turn your visit into a forgettable and wonderful experience. Well, that seems like an invitation, doesn't it? But then there's also a sort of construction site thing. Let me just walk in a little bit. Oh, look at the stone. I think it's Roman. Uh, ah, no, I know where I know I heard the name before. There's um, a stile from, from here, um, an Iberian stile, so <laughs> it's far before Romans. And I've even seen it, it's in, the, it's in the museum in Cordoba. So this must be where it's from. That would be dating to uh, 6th to 8th century, if I had to take a guess, uh, BCE. But, um, that's, that's quite impressive if, it, if it's Iberian. I don't think it is. I think the structure is probably Roman. Uh, yeah, it is. Later Islamic, actually. These uh, sort of archaeological sites, the thing is, they would usually have, what you call it, habitation across, um, across the millennia. So what would have started off as an Iberian... Oh, there's a truck here. Let's ask him if it's open. Hola! Abierto or cerrado? Cerrado! Vale. Okay, muchas gracias. Yeah, it's closed. Ah, uh, that's a real shame. And if there weren't men working, I've... Uh, I suppose if there weren't men working, the fence wouldn't be open and I wouldn't get any of the way. Bobbed wire and everything. As I was saying, these, these sites would be, uh, would have habitation dating across the millennia. So it could be Iberian, Roman, uh, and then medieval, which in this case would have been what they were calling later Islamic. Uh, that's a real pity. That's a real, real pity. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm between two minds. Are we still recording? Yes, we are. I'm between two minds about it because on the one hand, at home in Ireland, we have so many archaeological sites that aren't protected and as a result, they are being vandalised. But on the other hand, oh, damn it, I wish I could go and walk around it. This is the truck guy back again. <laughs> Adios. Gracias. All right. Definitely not. Not today, anyway. But this gentleman who is actually here. I'm going to get on the road and then I'll tell you all about it. So yeah, just leaving the archaeological site now. I didn't get in in the end. I was talking to the, the truck driver who saw me at the gate getting ready to leave after he drove past me the first time and he stopped the truck and said, oh, you want to go look around the ruins? I said, yeah. Uh, and he said, oh, okay, I'm gonna, gonna make a phone call to see if you can get permission to walk around the ruins. So he called a guy and said, oh, there's a, a foreigner with a motorbike at the gate and he wants to go in and look around the ruins. And then the guy said, oh, I gotta call my guy and so, that guy went ahead and called his guy and we were we were left chatting. It was very sweet. It was uh, 
middle-aged gentleman. He told me that the ruins were very beautiful and that he was sorry that it wasn't up to him to allow me to go in. And then we chatted about the weather. He said it's very hot for this time of year, which is what everybody is saying. Um, anyway, about 15 minutes passed and he got the call back. I don't know how many phone calls were made. Anyway, he came back that, no, I, I, I couldn't go walk around the ruins to look at them. And he was very apologetic. And I said, no, don't worry about it. Thank you so much for, for trying. And honestly, yeah, look, all the ruins are the same, but it was, it was really sweet and heartwarming of this guy who clearly really liked the ruins himself and wanted to allow me to see them. That was, it was very, very uh, considerate and kind of him to try and get me permission. Anyway, sure it's just a load of stones at the end of the day, isn't it? Going to spin back to Cordoba now. It's getting late. I'm very hungry. Um, I'm The name of that town, by the way, that I was trying to remember the name of is Epejo. I asked him what it was called because I couldn't remember the name. Epejo? I don't know. The Andalusian accent is very difficult. So, yeah, I'm gonna gonna spin back to Cordoba. I'm gonna give Marina a call and see if she's around to get a bite to eat um, in the city and... And yeah, let's just have a nice relaxing ride back on tarmac. <laughs> well, let's go. Oh, the smell, the smell of orange blossom. These are all orange trees and they're going into to flower now and the smell is so heavy and so... Oh, it's good, it is good. Some of the oranges weren't collected at the end of the year, of course, which um, gives you a very unique potential hazard for motorbikes, which is loose oranges all over the road. They've been brushed off to the side, thankfully. Sometimes they're in the middle and you have to squiggle around them. Uh, usually, they're all collected from marmalade. You can't eat these oranges, they're bitter oranges, they're for marmalade only. But obviously, they didn't do this street. Now, back in the city. Unfortunately, my um, camera died on the way back in. It's Marina, we're that YouTube vlogging couple. <laughs> and we're gonna go get a bite to eat now because I am starving. And I changed my t-shirt because I was very sweaty. Um, Cordoba is really busy today. It's not usually this busy and it's the start of Semana Santa, everyone's, everyone's favourite week. Hang on, I'm gonna stop this while we walk past this dog. Alright, Marina, can you objectively tell us what Semana Santa is? Uh, objectively. Uh, <laughs> it's Holy Week. It's the week before Easter and what they do is uh, they collectively go insane for about 10 days, um, processing through the streets, blaring squeaky trumpets and banging drums, and smoking the place out with incense, carrying these massive um, floats, what do you call them floats? Floats of statues of uh, the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, lots of people dressed up as Romans sometimes. Some of the floats are very impressive, some of them are very pretty, some of them are very old, um, and it's quite a spectacle. But it's also hugely, uh, it has huge touristic appeal, so the city is packed right now. It's probably the busiest week of the year for the city's tourism industry. And for people who live here, like Marina, <laughs> it means 10 days of broken sleep because they process at 3 a.m. Um, of not being able to get in and out of the city. And not being able to eat anywhere because places are full so yeah it's a, it's a bit of a mixed bag I think it's safe to say so even right now we're walking through the city and every bar and restaurant we've walked past is full so we're having a bit of trouble even getting a cup of coffee but it's all part of it isn't it? It's part of it. It's also a relatively small town, not really ready to get as many people as we get but yeah, it's, it's quite, a, quite an experience. It can be quite uh, um, shocking 
if you haven't grown up in this culture. Because for me, it's very normal to to see people processing on the streets with huge coats. That's the head. other thing. For anyone who's not from Spain, um, but is familiar with American history, people wear costumes like the KKK. They wear white hoods, big pointy white hoods, white gowns. They carry crucifixes. So for us who aren't used to it, there's quite a, a dissonance of, of imagery going on here in our heads. Um, anyway, that's enough about Semana Santa because that could be a topic in and of itself. If you're interested in Semana Santa, do check out my website because last year during Semana Santa I wrote about it um, and there's more information there. Right, food because I'm actually starting to get hunger sweats. I, can't, I don't really have much memory. Here we are. Let's eat some Syrian food. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come to this lovely little halal Syrian uh, home cooking restaurant because unsurprisingly nobody's eating in a halal Syrian restaurant on Palm Sunday in Cordoba. Which is great for us because the food is amazing. This is fresh hummus. And it's so smooth and so delicate. Um, and here we have a lovely falafel and a salad. Um, what is this juice? What are we drinking? It is lemon and, and mint. It's a type of mint. Maybe it also exists in, in English. It's called yerba buena. And it's really, really nice. It's like minty but also sweet. So it really balances out the lemon. That's how it's Paper straws, thumbs up. So good. Yeah. That's really good. Anyway, we're gonna sit here and enjoy our food. We didn't sit inside because it's a beautiful sunny day and because the street is packed. People are lining up on the street, so I think we're gonna get processed. I'm gonna meet one coming down, I'd say. Should we go? Jeez, oh god. <laughs> We've escaped up a little side street before we run into uh, any processions, because if you run into those, you could be half an hour before they pass. Half an hour? <laughs> and, and you can't you can't get to your house which is rather annoying so we've escaped it for the, for now anyway i'm going to end the video here i really hope you enjoyed um enjoyed the archaeological site what we saw of it anyway and this little bit of cordoba i'm not sure what the situation will be for the next week for videos because of semana santa it's going to be very difficult to get in and out of the city with the bike so we might do a little bit of a pause um, and again, if you sorry, I got something in my eye. If you'd like to see more of Semana Santa, do check out the website. Um, you'll have to scroll down a bit towards last year, this time last year, to find it. And that's really it, guys. Uh, thanks for coming along with me. If you enjoyed this and you're new, please do consider subscribing. We're a very small channel, so uh, your subscription will go a long way towards helping us grow, and it would mean a lot. So please do subscribe, and um, if you have any questions or comments, do let me know. And we shall see you very soon. Chat to you later. Bye-bye.